Hi, I'm Lori, and in this tutorial we will discuss export settings in Cinema 4D that are specific to motion vectors and UV maps for use with Remap and Real Smart Motion Blur. I'm going to start by showing you how to set up your project with the best settings to render your scene in Cinema 4D in order to use it with our plugins. In this example, we are using After Effects for the compositing in, but we work in other hosts too. I know all of this can sound a bit intimidating as there are a lot of steps, but once you get the pipeline locked and you see how useful this is and how much time it will save, you won't know how you lived without Remap or Real Smart Motion Blur. Let's start by discussing what the Remap UV plugin does. It takes a UV map rendered from a 3D application, in this case Cinema 4D, and interprets the UV map and remaps any texture to your 3D object without going back to your 3D system to re-render. This will allow you to come up with animated texture map templates and reuse them over and over with different image sequences just by remapping a new texture. With the addition of Real Smart Motion Blur added to your objects, you can make any motion look realistic without going back and rendering in your 3D application. Look how much free time you're going to have after you watch this tutorial and learn to use these plugins. Let's go to Cinema 4D. We're using version 13, and we'll see how we need to render our objects to make them work with Remap and Real Smart Motion Blur. Okay, here in Cinema 4D, we have this animation of a bouncing monitor. Our goal is to apply a texture using Remap UV and then add motion blur in post with our compositing system. What we're going to do requires an RGBA beauty pass, a UV map pass to use with Remap UV which can interpret the UV multipass from Cinema 4D or other 3D renderer, a motion vector pass to use with Real Smart Motion Blur, the motion vector pass represents the pixel motion between the frames. We also need a couple of object buffer passes to segment the monitor screen. And finally we may add a reflection pass to tie the whole thing together. Let's go over the render settings. Note that I'm using the new physical renderer. Starting at the top panel here, the regular image or RGBA beauty pass. We need to make sure the alpha channel is checked for that. If I go to output, I can see that my render here is 800 by 450. Note, if I select physical, you can see that I have turned off the motion blur and depth of field within the render. For the multipass, we already have our RGBA image, so we're going to add Material UVW, Motion Vector, and a couple of object buffers. We want to render the Material UVW and Motion Vector passes with Straight Alpha checked on. I want all these passes to be rendered at 16 bits per channel using a format like TIFF, PNG or 32-bit floating using a format like OpenEXR. Then I need some object buffers. We're going to enable per number, so in this case I know I want an object buffer for the face of the monitor because I'm going to switch out different logos on that monitor. I can enable object buffer 1 for that and we'll make sure I have an object buffer set to 1 for the multipass. I'm also going to make object buffers to exclude the extrusion. I need two, so I'm going to make those seven and eight and add two more object buffers to the multipass and make sure their numbers match. I also need an alpha channel for the whole scene for the motion vectors. Since I'm not rendering semi-transparent surfaces here, the alpha of my beauty pass will do. There are a few other things I need to check and be aware of. We want to look at the options for the motion vector pass. We can set the motion scale or displacement value to 2048 for now. This is a scaling value to remember to match when we get over to Real Smart Motion Blur. We will need to use this same number in the max displacement value. Again, in Cinema 4D, make sure the multipass straight alpha is checked so the edge pixels for these buffers are as expected by us. Since these multi-channel passes won't come with an embedded alpha channel in the Cinema 4D renders.
For the UV pass, here we needed to make sure the projection mode was flat in the texture tag. I'm telling you all this so you can do a little troubleshooting if something doesn't work as you would expect. For the UV pass, in the scenario that I'm working with here, where I want to replace the monitor with different logos, I'll want the UV map to fit the shape of my monitor. That is the icon object. If I look at the texture tag for the icon inner extrude, I can change the projection to flat. I want a little more control over how those results will happen, so I can go to the texture access mode. You'll see that it overlays this yellow grid over our object. The yellow grid itself is representative of the UV space. You can scale it up or down, but it will tile if the whole object area is not covered. I can undo that and go to the tags and choose fit to object. It will ask if you want to include the sub-objects. We can say yes. You'll see that it snaps to the size of the object. Normally you don't have to worry about this, but because we used extrusions, the UV settings won't work as well as possible by default, and it's worth helping ourselves out a bit at the render setting stage. Using the fit to object option works for our project because the images we will map are the same ratio as the screen, so fit to object will work. If it was not the case and we needed a one-to-one -one ratio, we could go to the coordinates tab and make this a square texture reference by matching the Y coordinate to the X coordinate. Once you finish setting these tags, it's a good idea to go to the stick texture tag and record. This will set that value into the object. The stick texture will lock these UVs to that texture even after deformations are happening. Now I can render all my elements. Okay, now I have all my elements rendered and loaded in After Effects. First, I want to make sure the project is 16-bit or 32-bit float. Otherwise, my texture mapping will be pixelated or blocky. I can verify that the UV pass and the motion vector pass are 16-bit or 32-bit float. Second, I want to make sure, using interpret footage, that I have preserve RGB selected in color management of the footage for the UV and motion vector passes. Since these values don't represent color data, having them color managed would defy the purpose. Now, in this particular project, we've, we actually needed two object buffers, as we're only interested in mapping on a section of the object. In our first comp here, multiply. I subtracted the outer frame off the face of the monitor. Now we can drop that in our remap comp. This is where we add remap. You'll see that the frame turns red. That's because remap's waiting for you to select a texture. We can select our product logo as a texture to remap. Note, if your texture looks something like this, when you're expecting something more like this, then perhaps you forgot to check the preserve RGB box. This is how easy it is to swap out different textures, logos, or whatever we want to remap on the surface of our 3D object. Also, note by default, now the image is upside down. Just use the proper flip mode. If our texture was done with a square texture reference, as discussed earlier, the best method would be to pre-comp the texture layer and change the height so it's square and it would have transparency over and under. This way the UV values would match. Here we don't have anything to do as we did it correctly to start. It's also possible in remap if you're just slightly off to fudge a bit. You can move the position offset slider, but here we don't need to do that. We should also turn on MIT mapping for high quality filtering. Note, you can read the documentation for understanding the controls, particularly if you have discontinuities in the UV map. Now let's look at Composite UV. This is where we recompose only that section over the beauty pass and this add texture comp. It might be nice to integrate the comp better with the reflection. So I can jump back into Cinema 4D and I'm going to render the reflection pass. For the reflection we want straight alpha to be off. We can render that now and jump back to AE and import the reflection. Obviously I did a little rendering behind the scenes.
and the reflection gets added. I use screen in this case to the add in texture comp so that the motion blur gets applied after the reflection. Now here's the motion vector pre-comp, pre-comp motion which is just the motion vector file and the alpha channel for the motion vectors. Note, the reason we do this as a pre-comp is that you can't render the motion vector file with an alpha channel from Cinema 4D. And we apply that to our composite and over the background in the add MB comp. So here in comp 5 is where we add Real Smart Motion Blur Pro with vectors. We select pre-comp motion as our motion vector source and then we can adjust the motion blur amount and you can see the motion blur is based on the actual motion vector file. Note, if the motion blur doesn't look as you would expect, go back and make sure you checked preserve RGB. Also, make sure you enter the same number that you used in Cinema 4D for the max displacement value. In our case it was 2048. Now isn't that handy? You can see all the time that could save you. Now we can see how easy it is to change the icon to the Real Smart Motion Blur one. And here we go, a new render, this time with a different product logo. Note that we're doing a quick render in After Effects as opposed to having to redo the whole thing in Cinema 4D. Of course, if your client is a sports league, a political party, or a TV show, you can see how easy it would be to use and reuse your 3D render for your promos with Remap and Real Smart Motion Blur.